Hey, this is Dr. Tasha, and I'm talking to you guys today about the Fresh Start Retreat Getaway 2025. It is a two-day, overnight, all-inclusive, all-food, all-drink, all-entertainment retreat. It is a refresh, a revive. We are going to empower you. We are going to educate you. We're going to make you laugh. We're sending you home with some gifts, prizes, and money. We're sending you home with new relationships. Do not miss this. If you think you came to a good one last year, we had nothing on this year. Don't miss it. I'm excited to participate in this one, y'all. October 17th through 19th here in Atlanta, AC Marriott Hotel, Fresh Start Retreat 2025. It's up. Hey, this is Dr. Tasha and I'm coming at you for Dr. Tasha After Dark with one of our sponsors who we love, Wet Kitty Vaginal Lubricant. It is that girl. It is odorless. It is colorless. It is tasteless. I said tasteless, girls. Um, it will not cause any vaginitis, will not cause any irritation. It does not dry. It does not get sticky. How you put it on is how it will remain on until you wash it off. We love her. Wet Kitty. Officiallypleasure.com is where you can find it. Hey, this is Dr. Tasha, and I am back with another episode of Dr. Tasha After Dark. Okay, y'all. So today we're going to talk about something a little bit more on the serious side. And I realized that it had kind of been swept under the rug and it had not been discussed. And y'all know I don't really play those kinds of games. Um, and I wanted to kind of get in front of it, meaning I wanted to tell y'all what it was, what the deal was, what the study means, how serious y'all need to take it. And then you know how I do. Once I give you the information, y'all grown, do what you want to do. But at the end of the day, I wanted to make sure y'all really had good information because y'all know sometimes these social media sites can be doing the most and they'll say stuff that's not accurate um, just to have clickbait. And so we don't want any of that because this is your health and this is for real. So this was like a real, real study that occurred. It actually just came out mid-July of this year. So um, this was like overseen by something called the Center for Baby and Adult Health Hygiene Products. I didn't even know that was a thing. I didn't even know that was a thing. The Center for Baby and Adult Hygiene Products called the BAHP. I didn't even know that was a thing. But anyway, so they did a tampon study. And when they did this study, they looked at organic versus non-organic. They looked at um, they looked at the um, brands in the U.S. versus the U.K. and other places because, yes, things are different. Why? Because they have different regulations. We have different reg We got damn near no regulations on nothing in this country and other countries. So stuff that we do here, like eat macaroni and cheese, it's like banned in other countries. Yeah. Is that serious? So they did a tampon study. Not one had never really been done before. And, um, they weren't specific things say what brands y'all, but y'all kind of know what they said was, it was 30 tampons from 14 brands and 18 product lines. And these were the top sellers in stores. So if you sit and you think about what are the top tampon sellers in the stores, what do you buy? What do you use? Just saying. Now, if you're one of my patients, you already know. My thing has already always been organic, organic, organic chlorine free chlorine free um raw cotton i have always pushed more natural feminine products and the reason for that is when you stick and again this is not a pad study this is not panty liner this is tampon okay when you put anything into your vagina the vagina is extremely vascular and it's a direct shot into your bloodstream so that's why I'm always like, be as chemical free as possible. You put a standard tampon in, baby, you put chlorine in that is going directly into your bloodstream. You think over time, over years, you're not going to see any consequences of that. You're not going to know where this is coming from. And it's going to, one problem is going to lead to the next, lead to the next, lead to the next. So I'm always like chlorine free, raw cotton tampons. Always. Okay. So they did this study. Woo, 
child, let's separate this. So if we separate, first and foremost, we found that it's lower levels of everything in the UK versus the US. And again, I told you we ain't got regulations on anything. So they just do whatever over here. I hate to say it, but they do. Okay. So the lower levels were in the UK. Now let's talk about standard tampons versus organic or organic versus non-organic major brand, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to have the tongue pop. So what they found, y'all ready for this? And tampons, <clears throat> they found lead, arsenic, and cadmium. Heavy metals. Let me say it again. Lead, arsenic, and cadmium. Understand that's going in your vagina, directly into your bloodstream. Where they do that at? Here in the good old US of A. Now, let me be very clear, and I have a disclaimer on this because... None of the tampons, not the organic and not the non-organic were free of anything. So what does that mean? Let me, let me, let me go back for the non-organic tampons. They found that there were high levels of lead for the organic tampons. They found that there were high levels of arsenic. Now that sounds scary as hell, don't it? But hold up though. Interestingly enough, there is no, no acceptable level of lead. I don't care how little lead it's in it, it's dangerous. Arsenic, a little bit different, although it sounds scary as hell and it sounds scarier than the lead. We have arsenic in some of the food that we eat. There's a trace amount of arsenic in our water. We take in a certain amount of arsenic. Do we know, here's the scary part, do we know what the safe level of arsenic is? No, but we know that there is a safe level. We just don't know where that cuts off. We know that there is no safe level for lead because let me go in on this and that's going to be your standard, your normal, your regular brand mainstream tampons, lead. When there's lead present, you have increased risk of dementia. You have increased risk of infertility, increased risk of cancer, and increased risk of diabetes. Let me say it again. Dementia, cancer, infertility, and diabetes. It can damage the liver, the kidney. This is lead now. Liver, kidney, brain, the cardiovascular system, the neurological system, as well as your endocrine system. Isn't that every damn system? I, I think, damn it, it is like I, I that's every damn system. So basically it can damage every damn thing. And you at risk for the ooh wee because the two D's, the dimension of diabetes, don't nobody want that infertility. We got problems with that as it is. And our rates have doubled over the last 10 to 15 years. When I say our, I mean, African-American, but women in general, the rates have doubled of infertility and then cancer. Y'all know we just, I mean, y'all already know. Okay. So. Now, people say, well, I mean, arsenic doesn't sound any better. Again, there is arsenic in our food. There's arsenic in our water. And you say, well, how did lead get in? We don't know. Manufacturing. We, we don't know. We don't know. Um, then we talk about, well, how did arsenic get in? Again, arsenic is in the water. It's in food. It's in the. It's in dirt. It's, it's in the places. So the thought is, is that the organic tampon kind of absorbed it from the air or from the moisture or from the water. And that is why you see trace amounts or amounts of arsenic in the organic. That is the thought. Okay. Now, nobody knows for sure, but that is the thought. Again, when we deal with this lead thing, I told y'all that is the kicker for me because yes, you know, when we're dealing with lead exposures in the blood we have to think about maternal health and we have to think about um fetal development as well yeah so this thing spans the gamut it's like why wasn't this on cnn why wasn't this on msnbc yeah where, where y'all at <laughs> so um you know, this actually puts the safety of tampons in question because you're like, you know what, if that's the case, just pad me, 
just pad me. And I mean, there are some times where you have to wear a tampon. So if we're in a situation where we just have to wear a tampon, it will go without saying that that is going to be likely and should be an organic tampon, not a standard, whatever, whatever. And now let's even look at the applicator. Because child, now we talk about the plastic applicators. Now y'all know that the plastic applicators are literally one of the major components in landfills. Like, really? So we, you know, we have stuff. We have stuff. But like I said, if we're going to do the tampons and if we have to do the tampons and some people, if you don't have to do the tampons, you don't have a preference. You just did them because it was um, more comfortable for you than maybe or more convenient. Maybe we might want to try things like the menstrual disc and the menstrual cup or pads or panty liners or whatever the case may be. But maybe now is the time to say, hold up, I don't have to wear them. So let me pull back on them until we continue with these studies. And we know a little bit more about what we got going on because to introduce any additional risk. Why are we doing that again? It just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, so that is the issue obviously we go non-organic i mean excuse me obviously we go organic and we stay away from the non-organic but with that even being said do we go for the organic so you know we can't even talk about whether we are at risk or not because like i said there are trace and our trace levels of arsenic in our food and our water we take it in but if you say okay well i can't avoid that because i don't know you know whether it's in this expensive spring water or this expensive alkaline water um, that I drink. I don't know if it's in my food, but if I know that it's in my tampons and I'm just not wearing damn tampons. Well, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, you know, I'm one to say that medical logic doesn't always line up with common sense, but this might be one of the times where it kind of does. I'm just putting it out there. Um, now, again, let me be clear. No brands were stated, but we all know when they say the top sellers, we all know who the top sellers are. OK, so again, in this case, what do you want to do? You want to do what makes most sense to you. You want to do what makes most sense to you. I'm just presenting the information. Um, and so if anything, you know, when it comes to if tampons are what you're going to continue to use, the one thing that I would say, you want to avoid any tampon that has any plastic fragments with it. One is bad for the environment. Two is bad for you. Um, so you don't want to have anything that contains any plastic. You don't want to introduce that as well. Um, we got lead, we got arsenic, damn, we got plastic. What don't we have down there? It's only a vagina. Like how much is y'all trying to make it successful? How bad are y'all trying to poison it and kill it? Like, damn. <laughs> um, and then also we want to avoid anything that has fragrances and colorants and all of those good things. So, you know, plain and simple. Um, there are times to save money and cut corners when it comes to your health, especially your vaginal health. That ain't really going to be one of the times, ladies. It's like, I keep getting this infection. I keep getting that infection. OK, I'm just feeling weak and tired all the time. Maybe I keep having I ain't even doing nothing. I ain't having no sex. I ain't got HPV and I keep having abnormal pap smears. I ain't saying that's what it's from. I don't know. This is a new study. It just came out like a month ago. Don't let me put don't let me take it to a whole nother level. I'm just saying as a provider, my brain has to start twirling. Um, especially with things going directly into our bloodstream. So my attitude is with the high risk of everything, the higher risk, uh, you know, where we're going as a country, our well-being, the foods that we're eating, the waters that we're drinking, the contaminants, the additives, um, the obesity, all of the things we really don't need to add any additional risks if we can avoid it. So this might be the time to broaden your horizons and do something different until we have more information about just how safe or unsafe our tampons are. So I hope this gave somebody some information. I hope that this made you guys look at things a little bit different and that you'll go and start looking at different. And like I said, you know, one of the brands that I have always pushed is Cora. 
Um, Cora has so many different products. They have the menstrual disc. They have a menstrual cup. They have the period panties. You know, I don't really understand those, but I think that's just my age group because I just don't understand just bleeding into panties. And then, like, it's not sticky. It don't hurt. Like, it don't feel bad. It, you're not itching to burn. And you don't stink. I don't know. I don't. I, my mind can't wrap around it. Even as a gynecologist, I just, I don't know. But somebody out there loves them. Um, but again, you know, it is the com the company is very much organic um, and they are sustainable and they give back to the community. They give menstrual products over in Africa. And again, this is not a paid um, this is not a partnership. This is not a paid anything. I'm just telling you um, what I know before I speak about anything. Um, I make sure I understand it in its totality. So. I'm all for what Cora um, does um, for the world and for the menstrual community um, in helping women um, find products that are right for them um, and answering questions that maybe their doctors or their parents won't, don't, don't take the time or can't answer. So um, if you have never heard of it, it's C-O-R-A, Cora. Um, they're in every store, just like the mainstream top sellers. Um, they're in all the stores and you can find them. You can go on their website, get information. Um, but if using a tampon is what you have to do for a particular reason, um, then please let it be something that's going to be organic. And I do recommend Cora. So again, I hope this, this is literally called the tampon study. Um, and if you Google the tampon study, um, you can pull up everything that I'm telling you um, for your own um, satisfaction and for your own knowledge. Um, and I hope this helps somebody. I hope this bless somebody. And I hope it changes the way you do things. Remember, our health is paramount. You can get money back. You can't get time back. You can't get your health back. So please um, let this be um, the thing that makes you start to focus on trying to do things better for yourself and for your body. So thank you so much for joining me um, in another episode of Dr. Tasha After Dark. <laughs>